Well, have you ever been to the John Day Fossil Beds? If you haven't, I really recommend you go. It's really an amazing place. It's a spot in Oregon that you can see anything from saber-toothed cats to fossilized hippos and really, uh, mastodons and really amazing fossils that used to live here in Oregon. It's also a place where you can see how climate has changed for Oregon. When you look all the way at the bottom, almost 50 million years ago, you find fossils that belong in almost a tropical environment. If you go a little bit higher up in the fossil column, you find grasslands and horses. You go even a little bit further up and you find, to almost present day, you find deserts. Why is that? Why is it that we have a climate that has changed so drastically for Oregon? Well, in this video, we're going to see that. We're going to explore the natural causes of climate change. We're going to actually end up doing three things in this video. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the various natural causes that change the climate. We're going to look at what are those things that create and change climate. We're going to predict how natural factors will change the climate. What would happen to them? Some will warm it and some will cool it. And finally, we're going to take those and we're going to apply it to a place like the John Day Fossil Beds. And we're going to see how they all come together. Well, I want to start off with this graph. Now, this is a really complicated graph, and I'm not asking you guys to understand all the unique nuances of this graph, but I do want you to see and understand what it's telling us. This is showing the Earth's climate since the Cambrian, since really life has been on our planet. Now, the way they find this out, they obviously don't have thermometers that go back 50, uh, 500 million years. Instead, we have different things, and we don't need to get too much detailed into the nuances and what's really hard about it but in oxygen, and different types of oxygen you can find different temperatures. But I want you to see is that at different times in Earth's history, it's been really hot. You look at over there at the Cretaceous, it's a pretty warm time. And other times, like the Silurian, it's been really cold. But obviously human beings weren't around. We didn't actually pop, pump fossil fuels into the atmosphere, and we can't be blamed for uh, climate change back in the Cretaceous. So something else is happening that causes climate to change. And this is what this graph is showing you. I also want you to pay attention that it kind of goes in cycles. Sometimes it's really warm, so then it's followed by a cooling off period. And then it gets warm again, and then it's cooling off. And we can see this oscillation, right? This going back and forth. Oscillation is a really fancy way of saying going back and forth between hot and cold. So what's doing that? What's causing our climate to go back and forth? Well, there's a couple of them. Actually, we're going to see there's four different parts to it. The first one really is ice. Now, we think of ice as making the Earth colder, and actually it does, not by the way you're thinking. Um, the reason that ice really acts as a cooling for our planet is it's really reflective. Now, you might experience this. I know if you've ever been skiing or really just been out on a snowy day where the sun is out, it is really bright because ice and snow reflect light. Well, when that happens, it actually ends up cooling the earth because it's reflecting and there's not enough, the heat isn't staying in. Well, you can also think of it this way. The more ice, the colder it gets, it creates more ice, which makes it colder, which makes create more ice. It's what they would call a feedback loop. One thing creates another, which makes more of the first thing. It cycles around. The opposite is also true. If we start to take away ice, it warms the planet, which takes more ice away, which warms the planet. So ice is a really critical way, a really easy way to make things hotter or colder. And it takes you to one extreme to the other. If you take away all the ice, it's going to stay that way for a while. If you add more ice, it's going to stay that way. It goes back and forth. So ice is our first way that nature controls the climate on Mother on planet Earth. The second one is a little bit more outer spacey, right? It's a little bit more astronomy. And it's by a gentleman uh, who went by the last name Milokovic, uh, and it's now called the Milokovic cycle. Very nice Russian name, Milokovic. And again, the details aren't important, but what is important that you can see and understand that there's big patterns in space and the Earth's orbit that change our climate. Really what Milokovic argued was there's three things in space that change our climate. One, the orbit or path that the Earth takes around the sun. Two, the tilt of the axis, how the Earth is tilted, 
Is it tilted at 21 all the way to 24? All right, hold on, 21, 24. Well, it makes a big difference. Or finally, the wobble. How much does it wobble around? Those three things work to change our climate. Let's look at them really quickly. The orbit of the Earth. Well, every 100,000 years ago, every 100,000 years, the Earth's orbit kind of fluxes. It goes in sometimes, it goes out, it kind of vibrates. And it takes 100,000 years for it to go from the inside to the outside, uh, from the inside, outside, and then back to the inside. It vibrates. Well, at some point, the Earth's orbit is smaller, and so it's getting more light from the sun. Well, that would make sense. You're closer. It isn't much, but that little bit causes it to be a little bit warmer. And the opposite is true. 50,000 years later, the Earth is a little bit further out, and it gets colder. So that together, those fluxes in and out, in and out, causes the Earth to warm up or cool down. So that's our first one. The second one, the tilt. Well, at some points, the Earth is only 21 degrees off of of straight. Well, that's right there. That makes a smaller pole. And so the seasons at the pole are smaller, and therefore there's less ice. It causes the Earth to warm up. Well, at some times, the Earth's axis is tilted a little bit more, to 24 degrees. That's so really small, only 3 degrees. But the result is a larger pole and more ice, and so it cools it down. So there is a natural way that the Earth is warming and cooling. And lastly, the Earth actually wobbles a little bit. Now, you don't feel it. It actually happens about every 25, 26,000 years. And that result changes the length of our seasons, that wobble. At some point, the seasons get longer, and just very shortly, and some they get shorter. Uh, certain seasons, winter and summer. And as a result, that changes the climate. When you put all of these things together, what Milokovic argued was about every 120,000 years, roughly, there should be a swing from hot to cold, from hot to cold. And you can see that in his argument. And you can see that in that graph we just saw. There was a nice swing, and that's a little bit bigger, but you can see how this is working. So we've got outer spaces affecting it. We have ice affecting it. We also have the opposite, volcanoes, fire. And volcanoes actually do both. We saw ice does both. It heats and cools by being how much there is. We see space does things. But volcanoes also do it. Volcanoes, when they erupt, initially they send up lots of ash. And that ash gets into the air, and the little tiny particles travel around the Earth. And it acts kind of like a blanket, except it reflects the light. The sunlight hits the earth, it hits that ash, and instead of being absorbed and turned into heat, it reflects it back into space. As a result, the earth cools down. But volcanoes also release CO2 and other greenhouse gases that they can go up in the atmosphere in large amounts and warm the planet. So volcanoes at some times can cool it, depends on how much ash is there, and they can also warm it. If there isn't much ash and just a lot of CO2, it warms the planet. So at some times, we'll see in the Earth's history that volcanoes have actually warmed us up, as is in the case of the Cretaceous, and at some times they've actually cooled us down. Well, Mount St. Helens actually had a cooling effect on our climate. So volcanoes can is our third way of going back and forth and changing our climate. Lastly, and this is a much larger for you and I and what we can see these drastic changes, is plate tectonics. And plate tectonics is the movement of the continents, that they move around on our mantle, on our mesosphere, and they're moved by convection, and one continent can be in the south and moves to the north and all over the place. That changes those four factors of climate we talked about in an earlier video, because Originally, a continent could be maybe in the tropics and be hitting getting sunlight directly on, which makes it warmer. It also changes ocean currents and allows ocean currents to travel at different directions. And For instance, Antarctica now has a polar uh, ocean current that keeps their ice there. It changes uh, prevailing winds and allows for different water or land to be in certain places and changes which direction the winds would come from that area. It also builds mountains, which changes landforms, which creates climate. See, plate tectonics is the major thing that's affecting the climate at different spots around the Earth and what makes it change. We have these big scale factors in outer space and volcanoes that randomly happen and ice that either is all there or all gone and travels in between. 
but plate tectonics is always moving our continent around, and so it's always changing our climate for every specific local place. So there's our four factors. So let's take a look here at North America, and really the John Day fossil beds. Why is it that 50 million years we see almost tropical things? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First off, 50 million years ago, Oregon was a little bit lower. We were right around the 30 degree line, and we were maybe a little bit more higher up, but that made us warmer, right? Because we were closer and that sunlight was hitting at a more of a direct angle. We were also a little bit wetter, especially where the John Day fossil beds were. We didn't have the nice cascades creating a rain shadow. And so you had more tropical, tropical and lush vegetation. But as plate tectonics moved us north, the sunlight became more at an angle, and as a result, it got colder. That lush tropicals went away. Also, Mount St. Helens, I'm sorry, Mount St. Helens, the Cascades actually grew up and created a rain shadow, which started to block a lot of the precipitation and rain that would feed those nice tropical or nice forests. As a result, we saw forests slowly start to turn around or go away as the Mount Cascades grew up. The climate was changing because these volcanoes grew up. We also see loads and piles of ash, which changed and would have cooled that area as the ash would erupt and fill the air, it would cool down the area. We also had ice ages in that time. Oregon didn't actually get covered in during the ice age, but it was up in Washington and that would cool our planet and would cool to Oregon. So as a result, as we go up the time scale and the geolog the fossils that we find, it's getting colder because of the, all those factors combined. And today it's ultimately a desert because of those mountains, the Cascades that have grown up there. So in this video, we did four things. The first thing we did is we identified the natural causes that lead to changing the climate. We see that ice, the amount of ice on our planet, changes how hot and cold it is. We see that these Milankovitch cycles, or how orbit the orbit of the Earth, or the axis, or the wobble changes it. That volcanoes can either heat or cool it, depending upon what type of volcano and what type of eruption. And finally, we saw that plate tectonics moves the continents so that they are affected differently by those four factors of climate from an earlier video. We are able to predict. We see that we can kind of get an idea by what's happening in our cycles to see whether it's going to get warmer or colder. And lastly, we identified the, how all of those things work together in a place like the John Day fossil beds and how it's gotten colder because of plate tectonics, because of the amount of ice on our, play, on our land, uh, by volcanoes, and by landforms building up. So let me remind you how these videos work. Right? If you're having problems, remember, you can always watch it again, more pause it or rewind it and see it again. But regardless, always remember just to keep moving forward.